everyone and welcome. If you want a seven-seater electric vehicle, there isn't a great deal of choice. It's always been the test of Model X, but in fact, you can't buy a Model X in this country at the moment, brand new. We sell lots of used ones and they're available used from about 50,000 pounds upwards or an X100D like this one, typically in the mid to upper 60s and upwards. Um, but like I say, they're not available now and in the UK, they're quoting end of 2022 for them to be released with a slightly revised version. So what do you do? Well, I think the only alternative at the moment is a Mercedes EQV. Quite a different vehicle, but it can be a seven seater. In fact, it can be a lot of different things. You can move the seats around and it can also be just a van when you want it to be. Uh, but is it a viable alternative to a Tesla Model X? Well, in this uh, episode, we're about to find out how the range and efficiency of the two vehicles compare. Maybe you are having to think of one of these uh, in the absence of a new Model X. Now these are new from £72,000, but available used from about £55,000. They're typically ex-demonstrators with a fairly low mileage, to be honest. So they can be pretty good value. A lot of people say, well, that's a lot of money for a van. But if you say, well, what do you get? You get a pretty luxury, high-tech, 100 kilowatt hour battery pack seven-seater family vehicle for that kind of money well in that sense maybe it's just a pretty good value big battery luxury electric vehicle but let's see so we're down in uh this is the smugglers Inn in devon or we're in cornwall now on the border this is a dartmoor in the background here and we've got about 160 mile journey back to our showroom in uh, new milton just outside of bournemouth so this is quite a typical journey a lot of people make for the holidays as well down into devon and cornwall so this journey as we return, we're gonna reset the trips and gauge exactly what uh, we have for each vehicle in terms of its efficiency, but also its comparable uh, theoretical range, 100% to zero. We're charging at the moment up to 85%. So we should have plenty of range to do that in one go from here now. We've just finished our lunch and we're gonna get in the cars and do that right now. Let's see what happens. Uh, before we start, let's just show you the difference in the size of these two cars. Cause obviously this is a van. It's a significantly bigger vehicle. And the EQV is only available as an extra long wheelbase. So whereas the V-Class Mercedes has got a couple of different lengths, extra long wheelbase is the only one you can get with the EQV. And how much longer is it? Well, 32 centimeters, which is just a tad more than the piece of this piece of paper. So about that much more than a Model X. However, it's narrower, about seven centimeters narrower. So that's quite significantly uh, less wide than the Model X, which has always been big, two meters wide that is. And then in terms of height, well, apparently it's about the width of a piece of paper. So something like that, does that look about right? Doesn't seem enough, does it? We've got the roof rails on that one there, remember. Plus weight. Oh yeah, suspension height in that I think is actually low. Um, so weight, this does carry nearly 200 kilograms over the Model X. That comes in about 2.4 tons, just over 2.45 tons. And this is about 2.6, 2.65 tons. So there is, a, you know, it's a significantly heavy car, but so is that. So this will be interesting to see, you know, I'm expecting the tester to be more efficient, but how much of a difference is there? And can the Mercedes EQV cover such a journey easy enough? Well, let's get on the road, let's find out. We've just joined the A30 and, uh, sorry. This is just a beautiful part of the country. I often come down here for holidays in the summer. Uh, just as good in winter, it's a lot colder, but um, it is a warm day today. So it's about 26 degrees Celsius according to this. It feels it, I'm hot. The air conditioning is going like the clappers now, cooling down. Um, and what we're gonna do with this is, um, as on a motorway, probably most of the time, we've got a quite good mixture. We've got motorway or dual carriageway at 70 miles an hour for most of the journey, but a large part is gonna be A roads, kind of your 60, 50 miles an hour country A roads. And then the last bit will be through town for a few miles. So it'd be a pretty good mixture of driving conditions. We're gonna keep this real world. So we're gonna be driving at the speed limit. We're not gonna be trying a hyper mile and get the very best in the car. We're gonna be driving at the speed limit the whole time. We're gonna be in convoy. Again, the best way to compare efficiency is at the same speed, same time, same road, same temperatures, etc. Um, we'll make sure we swap around so there's no um, you know, slipstream of benefits and we've checked the tyre pressures all at the right temperatures so um, pressures sorry so uh, as good as a efficiency comparison as we can get and it will be interesting to see what happens so I'm going to get on with this journey and then along the way I'll probably tell you a few things about what I think of each car and how they compare to drive. So 
again, so with my range, my EQV does suggest a charging stop on the way. Only quite a brief one, but um, in seven and a half miles, even though we've only really just got going. So I'm going to ignore that, carry on anyway. I guess you've got plenty as well, haven't you? Yeah, I got 220 left and that uh, doesn't even want to charge anything. Okay, so I guess the EQV has been a little bit cautious, suggesting a charging stop just to make sure we can complete the journey. But um, to be honest, I think we're fine. I'll just manage the range of speed if I need to, but I want to keep at the speed limits. And if I really have to, I'll top up nearer to the destination, but I'm going to go straight through. I guess it's suggesting a charge stop actually not too far into the journey, but one of the things the EQV does is charge quite fast, quite the long way through its state of charge. So with the testers, they start fast and faster than this, um, and then sort of gradually and quite continuously slow down. The EQV charges, a, from what I've charged at, about 107, 108 kilowatts, but through quite a long way until 70 to 80 percent and it'll just tail off you know gradually then at the end but still carries on quite fast all the way through so you can plug in even with a higher state of charge and top up quite quickly um, so it doesn't have quite this peak charge rate of many a modern electric vehicle but it is good and it is consistent as long as you can find charges of at least 100 kilowatts in speed so a 50 kilowatt charge on this well if you're really empty it could take you a couple of hours but um, yeah you do want quicker charges really so let me try and summarize what the eqv is like to drive in comparison to the model x i've covered many many miles in the model x uh great cars smooth plenty of space inside actually quite sharp handed for a car of its size suv style it's fun you know it's quick and it can go around corners remember all the way it's low down so unlike uh you know range drivers and such like it it's cornering is great um and they're they're a great car you know they really are we love the model x great software inside it as well but what's the eqv like well I've now covered about 3,000 miles in total with this one, actually a bit more than that now, and I have just spent a week, seven days, seven nights camping in this van, so there's another video coming about that, now you may already see it on our channel list, if it's already out we'll put a link in the uh, description below and just above here, um, but let's try and summarise it. So it's pretty good is the answer you do feel it's van roots you know basically it's a very very good van in that it's actually very smooth it's very quiet i enjoy doing long journeys in it because i like sitting with my feet down armrest this noise is well insulated it's comfortable it's pretty smooth um, what you do feel sometimes and certainly more on some of the country roads is the fact you're sitting on the front axle so you go over a series of bumps you do find yourself sometimes bouncing a little bit on the front axle that's kind of mitigated if you do have a bit of a load in the back you know seven people or a load of luggage and stuff like that and that kind of balances it out a little bit more um, but it's actually pretty good you know visibility is good it, it is nice to drive and um, I find for example the active distance ass assist is pretty good and the software it's not Tesla level software but it does run the latest uh, MBUX system um, from Mercedes so it, you know it's a reasonably uh, good interface I can look up a location on, a, on my Apple Maps for example and just send it to the vehicle and it goes straight into the nav that works well and you can do that with Tesla's but Tesla's are easy to put it straight in so it's, it's pretty good it does show its van routes and it's, it's nowhere near as much fun or car like as the Model X but it does itself pretty proud if I'm honest it's a, a reasonable place to spend quite a lot of time I really like in this EQV the paddle system on the steering wheel here you can quickly adjust how much regen or go to free wheel you know coasting mode so it goes from coasting mode to a really hard regen in four steps with the paddles on the steering wheel and I think that's one of the best things that I don't see in other cars to the effect or degree of this. Um, what do you think of it? I mean, you just drove me all the way to Cornwall. What do you think? Yeah, so I really like when electric cars does have a good region. Like, for example, like Porsche Taycan, it almost has no region. It's sort of, it feels like a normal car, but you know, it's electric cars so are supposed to have a good region. So Mercedes has a ridiculously good region. Like, you know what I mean? You put like in, what's it called, D minus minus. It sort of like takes all the other the seat, like it pulls you forwards because yeah. it's so much region. 
And Tesla, I mean, yeah, it's good. And those pedals is nice as well. You can actually coast and then put a big mush region on. And Tesla, I think, is the most balanced because it has a pretty good region. And you can balance it with the throttle as well, same as any electric car. And I think, I think I'm just very used to Tesla, how it drives. And yeah, it's pretty good. I think it'd be quite nice to see the option in the test and to quickly adjust it because it's not for everyone. Most people are happy just as it is, but I must admit, I found driving this sometimes just to put it in the coasting mode. Yeah, it's pretty good. It feels like you're being more efficient. Probably not, but it feels kind of good. Um, now, what I want to test whilst you're behind me right now is I'm going to lift off the throttle with full regen on. Can you just assure me if my brake lights come on or not? Ready? Yep. Yes, they come on. Good. And I know they come on on a Tesla as well, so just double checking. Great, okay, well let's uh, continue the journey and we'll see how we go for efficiency. I think it's too early to test it now. We've only done 30 miles, but um, we'll, we'll take a check a bit later on when we finish with the motorways and go onto the country roads, okay? Cool, well, I think I'm gonna win that one, but yeah, sure, let's check it out later. Okay, mate, speak to you in a bit. Gins, your turn in front now. You can't keep sitting behind this van getting aerodynamic advantages. You may as well attach a tow rope. Go on, let's switch around. Your turn. Let's make it even. Okay, regen race from here. Ready, steady, go. Regen. Yeah, hang on. That doesn't, that doesn't count, mate. We couldn't really do it in time. We look like a couple of idiots fighting over a gap in the road. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to try a regen race. So, Gins, get level. And what are we doing now? 50 miles an hour. So, three, two, one, lift off. Oh, not much in it, but the EQV slightly stronger regen, I think you'll agree. You know how competitive I am, so I will disagree with you in this one. I think the video will show I was slowing down quicker than you, was it not? Uh, that's a photo finish, so we'll have a look back in the office, but it was very close. It's kind of weird because we're used to, like, with the drag stuff, if a car goes ahead, that it's quicker and stuff like that, so... But I think I was slowing down quicker. You were starting to come past, but there really isn't much in it. Both quite strong region. I thought this one just feels stronger than that car, but obviously pretty similar, really. Yeah, so I was about to say that it feels way stronger in, in Mercedes. Way stronger. Like, here, yeah, lift up, I don't feel anything almost, but, it's, but I'm next to you and you're falling down the same speed. So, yeah, that's interesting why right? it feels completely different. Yeah. Yeah, I quite agree, but there we go. Okay, that's about as good a test as we can do. Of course, one of the standout features of the Teslas is autopilot. So now that we've spent a bit of time on the dual carriageway here, um, yeah, it's the sort of time I'll be engaging autopilot. It keeps the distance from the vehicle in front and keeps the car in the lane, keeps it central down the lane. And it works very well and it's pretty unique to Tesla. This van does have to be fair a lane keeping uh, assist and an active radar cruise control and like many other cars including sort of Audi e-trons I've driven recently um, it does a pretty good job it just works in a very different way when you engage these systems the Tesla kind of really does feel like it's taking over I've got this I'm in the middle of the lane and you're just there to kind of check it does an okay job yeah, it does a pretty good job of that a few glitches as software develops that'll be ironed out but you know how does the radar and lane assist work in this well uh, pretty good so radar fine that keeps the distance you can adjust that the lane assist is quite casual so you can move around a little bit in the lane you still feel like you're the one keeping it in the lane but if you veer to the edge it pulls you back in and it, it does an okay job of that uh, what I do quite like that this does and the Tesla doesn't is um, try and picture this scenario where you're driving along in the inside lane and you're coming up to a slow vehicle you're, you're behind a slower vehicle slower than the speed you want to go when you indicate to change lanes in this, it actually starts picking up speed as it pulls into the other lane, um, which is really good because what the Tesla does, it kind of changes lane and then picks up speed, which actually if there's a car coming down the outside here quite fast, can sometimes not feel quite right. So I actually quite like it for that. And maybe we'll see an option for that in the Tesla software as that develops and grows. But yeah, that's quite a nice little feature. Something you don't really think about, but something I spotted having driven this van for quite a bit now. So there you go. Now, given it's quite warm today, I was thinking this would be quite an efficient run, but 
I forgot that going across Dartmoor and the moors it's very hilly so although I can recover some energy going downhill there are some pretty significant uphill sections and I keep in 70 miles an hour you know so I'm, I'm sort of foot down um, and my efficiency I can get 2.7 sometimes even 2.8 miles per kilowatt out of this uh, van on a good run um, but at the moment I'm running 2.1 so yeah well I hope I don't have to charge on the way back but uh, as we come over the moors, um, hopefully we can steady things out a little bit, get some more efficiency going. But at least the Model X has got the same heels to contend with, so this is where these side-by-side -side comparisons on the same journey is really important. Hello, Richard. Okay, again, so we've covered 75 miles and we need to exit the dual carriageway motorways now. From here on in, it's mainly A road. So before we get onto them, what's your average economy? So averaging around 348 watt hours per mile. 348, so three, let's say 350, so that's about 2.8 to 2.9, if my maths is right, miles per kilowatt hour. So 2.8, something like that. Um, ah, yeah, so I'm on 2.4 miles per kilowatt hour. So, yeah, so that's a more efficient. Right, we've just exited, coming around here now as we go through Honiton, uh, our UK viewers will know where that is, and now it's all those A roads between Honiton and the Bournemouth and Pool area. So if you've done that journey, you'll know just how up and down they are. Slow A roads, fast A roads, and a few little dual carriageway sections. So let's see if there's much difference from here on in. Let's see what the performance difference is like between these two cars. Yep. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you later, pal, yeah? <laughs> and, and, and the range mode, I didn't even change, so that's a range mode. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, there's a massive performance difference between these two cars, as we would expect. EQV is 0 to 60 in about 12 seconds, I think it is against, isn't it? Yeah. Like Certainly a lot slower yeah. for overtaking. <laughs> See, it, it feels, it feels okay. okay. Like I'm just coming past this motorhome now, feels fine, punches up the hill. But compared to <laughs> Model X, the Model X is just gone, like it's just been hit up the back by a train. Yeah, massive difference there, but... Uh, the EQV feels pretty good for most vehicles, to be honest. There you go. Right, so we're coming into town. The last 15 miles of this journey is going to be through town. So I want to know two things. What's your average so far? So I'm averaging 336 watt hours per mile since we left. Okay, three miles per kilowatt hour. Nice and simple. Um, I'm on 2.5 miles per kilowatt hour. A little bit gained on the uh, kind of country roads, but it was so up and down, wasn't it? Pretty hilly, it wasn't like the normal coasting A roads. Right, what I want to do now for this last little section is reset another trip and just to see how they compare now. We're kind of getting into town, getting into rush hour, and we'll just see if there's any difference on that. I don't think it'd be enough distance to make a journey to the overall trip, but let's just reset another trip to get just this part, okay? I'm going to do mine. Now, okay, I'm reset. Uh, let's just see how they compare. Right, last 15 miles, we're nearly back, mate. Not too bad, except the traffic in town's okay. Okay, at last we're back, so let me have a look at our trip. Right, so that journey, I averaged 2.6 miles per kilowatt hour. I don't know if you can see that there. Um, and I've recorded 144 miles on this trip because I actually didn't reset that trip um, when we left. It was my mistake, but I know we did seven miles. I've reset it when we travelled seven miles and we both reset our trips at the same time. Um, so what have I got left? So here we go. Um, I've got 18% left. So I've gone from 85% to 18%. Let's work out some figures, but for the minute I want to concentrate on efficiency. 2.6 miles per kilowatt hour. Gins is over there. Uh, Gins, what was your economy uh, since we left? Since we left, I averaged 337 watt hours per mile. 337 watt hours per mile, so um, just under uh, three miles per kilowatt hour. So, yep, the Tesla is more efficient, that's for sure. Okay, now let's just work out some pro rata stuff um, for what mileage we could do on the whole trip and we'll come back to you shortly with those results and finish it all up what we think here's trip b when we reset 
Okay, I don't know how well you can see that, but um, 13 miles, uh, sorry, 12 miles, although the Tesla recorded 13. Um, I averaged 2.7 miles per kilowatt hour, and interestingly, um, uh, the Tesla recorded 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour, so slightly more efficient, but um, the very last section as we come sort of back out of town to our showroom is dual carriageway again. Now before that, I was at 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour and um, Gims was about 3. So in fact, around town, you can, you can see that's down to aero basically, isn't it? So actually around town, just calling the traffic, this is actually slightly more efficient, I think. Um, didn't do a vast amount of mileage in traffic, but I have noticed when I'm in traffic, it's quite efficient, but of course, once you get rolling, um, it's the drag and this is a van. So that's where it hits it. So that was quite interesting. In the traffic jam, it was actually pretty good higher speeds it uh, certainly harms it anyway on the whole trip let's work out how many miles we would get pro rot okay so here's the trip in the uh, tesla so since it was unplugged the journey there 151.3 miles um and then, like i said we got a few miles down the road and then i reset my trip so trip a was then reset 337 watt hours per mile so they're the same and then around town 13 miles recorded on the x and an average of 344 watt hours per mile. Uh, so let's have a, a bit of a summary then um, in terms of what the vehicles will be able to do. Based on that efficiency today on that 151.3 mile journey, um, the Tesla used up 60% of its battery. So if we pro rata that to 100%, that would give a total range of 252 miles uh, on the, uh, if we carried on driving with the same efficiency. The um, EQV on the same hand, uh, finished that with 18%. So that pro rata turns out to be 100% uh, to zero, be 225.8 miles. So not too bad. Again, as expected, really the Tesla is more efficient. The Mercedes um, slightly less so, but actually still to get well over 200 miles out of a large van is, uh, isn't is too bad, I don't think. Um, and not the most efficient of journeys either. I mean, it's nice and warm, but the aircon was going hard and um, uh, there's a lot of hills, you know, so although we can gain regen on the way back down, it's still not like driving nice and flat and smooth and consistently. So yeah, real mixed bag, but 225.8 miles to the EQV. I think it's reasonable. Okay, all right, I'm gonna go and have a coffee and then we'll summarize it all up, shall we? Okay, so based on today's journeys and those conditions, um, the EQV proved itself pretty good, really. 225.8, let's call it 226 miles to a full charge. And the Model X, so over 250 miles to a charge in today's conditions. So they're not really competition. They're, they're really quite different cars, but um, you know, to drive the X is like a very good car. It's a great long distance car, well, loads of space, very comfortable, and then it's pretty nippy and fun as well. The EQV, well, it's a very good van. I don't, you know, it is a van, it does show, but they have made a pretty good job out of it. And I think ultimately, if you need a sheer amount of space, uh, seven people and loads of luggage room still, or be able to remove seats and even camp in it, then the EQV is a very practical van and still capable of reasonable mileage. So. Um, yeah, we like to see until there's more seven-seater EVs on the market, and then we'll certainly test those ones then. Uh, in the meantime, I hope this has been uh, an interesting day out with us. Uh, we've had a lovely trip down to Cornwall and back, so thank you for watching once again, and we'll see you on the next video.